Okay, students, about a qu solving a quadratic formula. The first step that you need is everything has to be equal to zero. And the reason is, well, just remember when you solve for intercepts, you know, you make one variable equal to zero when you solve for the other variable. That way you can put everything, you can put that coordinate on the axis. Well, you're doing the same thing here. I mean, this is just a way to find the two intercepts that you'll need to build your graph. So, make sure everything's equal to zero. Once everything is equal to zero, the next thing I need to do is I need to label th all three parts, the square, the variable, and the constant as A, B, and C. A is equal to the square, and if you notice, right here for y squared, I have the coefficient is three. So I'm gonna make A equal to three. The second part, I have the variable y, and the coefficient for y is negative two, so I'm gonna make B equal to negative two, and the constant c is equal to negative 8, so I'm going to make c equal to negative 8. Now I'm going to have a formula, and the formula says negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now it's time to actually substitute. So when I substitute, instead of negative b, now it's going to be negative, open the parentheses, Instead of b, I'm going to replace b with negative 2. Still okay, I'm going to keep the plus or minus. Although, I want it outside of the parentheses. So let's redo that. Negative 2. Now, plus or minus. And the square root. And instead of b squared, now it's going to be negative 2. And make sure your exponent is outside of the parentheses. Remember. I'm replacing b with negative 2. I'm not replacing b squared with negative 2. The negative 4 here hasn't changed, so I'm still going to type in negative 4. a I'm going to replace with 3. So inside the parentheses, I'm going to write 3. And c I'm going to replace with negative 8. In my denominator, I have 2, that's not going to change, and I'm going to replace a with 3. So if you notice, I, I've substituted 5 times, twice for b, twice for a, and once for c. Now, now let's multiply everything. So negative times negative is positive 2. I'm going to keep my plus and minus sign. I'm also going to keep my square root symbol. Now, negative, now I have negative 2 squared, so that's negative 2 times negative 2, that's positive 4. The next thing I'll multiply is negative 4 times 3, that's negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 8, well, that's positive 96. And in my denominator, I have 2 times 3, and that is 6. The next step is I'm going to add what's inside of my square roots together. So I'm gonna, I still have my plus two and I still have my plus and minus sign. Now inside the square root I have four plus 96, that's 100, divided by six. Now, Next step is I want to find the square root. So in my numerator, I still have plus 2, and I still have my plus and minus sign. And the square root of 100 is 10, and divided by 6. Let's scroll this up slightly. There we go. Now, I have a plus and minus sign. So I have to add 10 and I have to subtract 10. The only way I can do that is by splitting this equation into two parts. The first part will be, will be positive 2 plus 10 divided by 6. Now since I added 10 once, now you kind of know what I'm going to do next. It will be plus 2 minus 10 divided by 6. Now, if I add everything together, 2 plus 10 is 12, 
I'm still leaving the denominator 6 alone for now. I'll divide in the next step. And positive 2 minus 10 is negative 8 divided by 6. Now that I've done that, I can just divide. 12, 12 divided by 6 is just 2. So I'll write 2. And I could simplify negative 8 divided by 6. I can divide 2 into the numerator and denominator. And I can get negative 4 over 3. And now I found the uh, intercepts for both parts of this graph. And that's what the quadratic formula is used for.